All right, this looks like a quorum to us, so we're going to go ahead and get started here. Welcome to the uh, Coastal Sharks Management Board. I'm Mel Bell, the, the chair. Uh, we have a uh, fairly brief agenda. We've got a couple of action items we're going to have to deal with, so we'll uh, go ahead and get started. And uh, only thing standing between you and lunch right now. All right, so first thing would be approval of the agenda. Uh, are there any uh, modifications to the agenda? John Clark, did you? Yeah, okay. Got you down for something. Okay. Got one item there. Any other uh, modifications to the agenda? All right. Seeing no other modifications, we'll adopt the agenda as modified uh, with one uh, action, uh, one item under other business. Uh, okay. Uh, approval of proceedings of the May 2022 meeting. Any edits to the minutes from May 2022? Don't see any hands. So, the minutes will stand approved then. Okay, it takes us to public comment. This would be public comment for anything not on the agenda. Do we have any public comment? See no hands. You guys got any hands virtually? Nope. Okay, no public comment. All right, that takes us to our first actual item, which would be to set the 2023 specifications for the fishery. And I will turn it over to Dustin and he's got to gonna run us through that. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Uh, we've got just a short amount of time and just a few things to get through. So I'll get right into it. Uh, we're gonna be covering the 2023 commercial specifications for coastal sharks. Next slide, please. So this is the same process that we've used in previous years. Uh, the proposed rule from the NOAA Fisheries Highly Migratory Species Division was published on September 9th, and that was included in the briefing materials. Uh, the final rule will be published after this meeting, uh, sometime later this fall. And the proposed rule uh, demonstrated that we have pretty much everything status quo. The quotas uh, remain status quo from 2022, and they've been the same for a, a number of years now. The rule also proposes to open all shark management groups on January 1st of 2023, and the aggregated large coastal sharks, other than sandbar sharks, retention limit also remains status quo at 55 sharks per vessel per trip. Black nose sharks Retention limit is also status quo at eight sharks per vessel per trip. Next slide. So here we have the 2023 quotas themselves, and I'll quickly just run through them. For the aggregated large coastal sharks, we have a proposed quota of 372,552 pounds dressed weight. For hammerhead sharks, we have 59,736 pounds. For non-black nose small coastal sharks, we have 582,333 pounds. For black nose sharks, we have 37,922 or 21 pounds. For smooth hound sharks, we have 3,973,902 pounds dressed weight. Next slide. For the non-sandbar large coastal sharks research group, we have a proposed quota of 110,230 pounds. For a sandbar shark research group, we have a quota of 199,943 pounds. For blue sharks, it would be 601,856 pounds. For poor beak, for poor beagle sharks, it would be 3,748 pounds. And then lastly, pelagic sharks, other than poor beagle or blue sharks, would be 1,075,856 pounds. Next slide. So it's really simple here today. We're just considering whether to um, approve the 2023 coastal shark specifications via an email vote after NOAA Fisheries publishes their final rule for the 2023 Atlantic shark commercial fishing season. Um, Caitlin Starks and Tony Kearns will help with that email vote process. Um, so if we approve this here today, 
alternate runs as we have done so in previous years. And I do have a motion prepared for the board's consideration if they'd like to move forward with that route. All right, so everybody understand where we are? We just need a simple, uh, someone uh, would care to make a motion. John Clark. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, you want me to read it into the record? Uh, move to approve the 2023 Coastal Shark specifications via an email vote after NOAA Fisheries Highly Migratory Species Division publishes the final rule for the 2023 Atlantic Shark commercial fishing season. All right, and Chris Bat Savage seconds. Any discussion of the motion? Any objection to the motion? Don't see any, so motion carries. Thank you. That takes us to our next item. <laughs> okay, which once again will be Dustin. Thanks, Mr. Chair. After we complete the motion, if we could pull up the uh, PowerPoint for the FMP review. All right, another agenda item that'll likely go through fairly easily, um, but we do have the Coastal Sharks FMP review of the 2020 fishing year. Now, this uh, is uh, a little bit more delayed than we usually do uh, this review. Uh, typically, this occurs at the spring meeting. However, there was a little bit of a delay not getting it on that agenda, and so we decided to bring it up here the next time the Coastal Sharks Board meets. Um, just so you are aware, though, due to the data that's used in the FMP review report, that's published through NOAA Fisheries, they have a, a quite, quite a significant delay in terms of when that data becomes available. So already within our standard process, we're typically a year later than most FMP reviews. Next slide. So here I have listed the sections of the FMP review report, uh, but like I said, in the interest of time and getting you all to lunch, I'm going to only briefly touch on these topics. Next slide. So the Coastal Sharks FMP was implemented in 2009. And here on the screen, I have the five subsequent addenda that modified the fishery management plan. There are no coastal shark monitoring or research requirements. And the commission also follows the lead of NOAA Fisheries Highly Migratory Species Division on setting qu quotas and closures as we just went over. Next slide. In regard to status of the stocks, there haven't been any changes to status uh, of any of the sharks for the managed shark species. However, there was one new stock assessment since this issue was taken up last. The Atlantic black tip shark uh, stock assessment revealed that the stock is not overfished and not subject to overfishing. Next slide. Now to cover status of the fishery. The commercial landings of aggregated large coastal shark species in 2020 were 227,783 pounds, uh, roughly a 30% increase uh, from 2019 landings. The commercial landings of small coastal shark species in 2020 were 234,557 pounds, a 28% decrease from 2019 landings. And the commercial landings of Atlantic pelagic sharks in 2020 were 98,514 pounds, which represents an approximate 6% decrease from 2019 landings. And then here on the graphic up on the, the screen, you can just see trends over time uh, grouped by species management group. Next slide. This graphic displays recreational harvest of sharks in numbers. And as was the case for commercial harvest, generally recreational harvest decreased for large coastal sharks, small coastal sharks, and pelagic sharks in 2020 relative to 2019. Next slide. So now I'll cover de minimis requests. This fishery management plan actually does not establish specific de minimis guidelines that would exempt a state from regulatory requirements contained in this plan. De minimis is determined more on a case-by-case -case basis. Massachusetts is requesting a continuation of de minimis status for the aggregated large coastal and hammerhead species groups with regard to the possession limit and closure requirement. And Massachusetts is also requesting that black nose sharks be included within the exemption given the species range and based on the fact that no black nose sharks are landed in Massachusetts. Next slide. 
So the plan review team reviewed the de minimis request and recent data and recommends de minimis status be granted to Massachusetts for the aggregated large coastal, hammerhead, and black-nosed species groups. The PRT also noted that the non-offset circle hook requirements for the recreational fishery have not been implemented yet in New Jersey. In the compliance report, New Jersey has indicated that their rulemaking process has faced some delays, uh, but implementation is expected uh, by January of 2023. So the PRC will just continue to monitor this in their next year of uh, review. Lastly, the plan review team noted that Georgia's recreational regulations allows for the landing of one hammerhead, one shark fin mako, and one other shark. And keep in mind, this is for 2020 before the short fin mako retention limit was implemented, uh, zero retention limit was implemented. Uh, but that three shark um, regulation for recreational retention is in excess of what is allowed under the FMP, which if you remember is one shark per person per vessel plus one Atlantic shark nose and one bonnet head. So this issue has been raised with the Georgia Department of Natural Resources and staff there have indicated that the regulations will be updated accordingly. Next slide. So with that, just a very quick review of the FMP and compliance, um, and most importantly, the PRT comments and recommendations. Um, aside from the issues that the PRT raised, uh, there were no other major concerns. So. Uh, I turn it back to you, Mr. Chair, for any questions. And then uh, again, we do have a motion prepared uh, if the board would like to move ahead with approving state compliance, FMP review, and de minimis requests. All right. Thank you for the presentation, Dustin. Any questions regarding anything in there or anything not in there? Y'all must be hungry. <laughs> okay. I don't see any hands. So we could queue up the motion. All right, this would be a motion to approve. Uh, yeah, uh, you, uh, yes, Nicola. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd move to approve the Coastal Sharks FMP review for the 2020 fishing year state compliance reports and the de minimis request from Massachusetts. All right, thanks. And Eric Reed seconds. Any discussion of the motion? Any objection to the motion? Seeing none, motion carries. Thank you. Okay. Uh, well, that those were the two items that we had to uh, cover. And remember, uh, we will get a follow-on email regarding the uh, uh, dealing with the uh, the fish 2023 fishery because look for that after noah uh, does the final rule okay uh john clark you had a item you wanted to bring up uh thank you mr chair and uh i'll make it brief far be it from me to stand between anybody and lunch but um uh many of the commissioners know that i i sent out an email a couple of months ago about uh bow fishing and uh rays and um you know, I greatly appreciate the responses I received about that. And the part of the bow, it's three parts, of course. There's the bow fishing and the lights, which is a state issue. But the problem that I have right now in Delaware is that um, we can't manage a species that doesn't have a management plan, at least a, you know, two state management plan. And uh, the Harvest arrays, as I looked into this, is actually pretty significant um, uh, in our state, which, as you know, is a very small state. And as I looked into it and got information from uh, up and down the coast, I mean, it seems mostly from about Delaware South. And I know uh, from the information I got from New Jersey, it's not legal to do this in New Jersey, but it seems like it's going on in every other state. Uh, the technology has gone to the point with the um, generators and lights that this is now a uh, growing activity and i was just curious if uh, you know rays of course are not sharks but they are elasmobranchs i didn't know whether this is where it would would fit but um it, one of the comments that keeps coming up from 
public in Delaware about this issue is that, you know, I'll say we can do something about the, you know, regulating the lights, but we can't stop them from harvesting as many rays as they want to. And I, I, I give credit to the, uh, the guides in Delaware that are doing this. They are uh, very sure to point out that they are cleaning these fish. They're, they're giving them to their clients that are um, killing these rays, but they're, they're killing a lot of rays. And I just didn't know whether there was any interest uh, in the board to start looking into that. I know um, uh, from Maryland has been working on a ray management plan, right, Lynn? And I don't know if any other states have given any consideration of that, but I just wanted to put it out there. Thanks. Okay. Thanks, John. And yeah, appreciate you asking about that. And I know, um, you know, we don't manage them either in South Carolina. Um, and um, I can see where, you know, some of the gear things or lights and all, yeah, that's, that's something you can deal with. Um, it, but yours is recreational uh, primarily or, or, or all? Right. Right now it is recreational, but um, given that it, it is illegal gear to be using commercially too, not that anybody is. And uh, given the amount of harvest and that can be done, if there really was a market out there, I think, you know, there might be something that can develop. And, you know, of course, rays like sharks, um, the ones that are most common in the inshore waters where we are, like the, uh, the cow nose and the bull nose rays, and uh, they're slow to reproduce. You know, they typically have one or two pups a year. So, the, they are something that can be um, over harvested, I think, and uh, also some of the concerns about them in terms of their um, eating clams and things like that are pretty much overblown based on diet studies. They're not really a menace to shellfish populations. Okay. Any, any questions, comments, any thoughts on that from other states at this point? I agree while they're, while they're uh, yeah, Jason. And just a question for John, Mr. Chair, if, if you don't mind, uh, John, is it your sense that because of the way the fisheries prosecute, it's not like it, you know, it's happening at night. Um, is, are, um, are the fish not being intercepted? Like, is it being captured by Emmerich or is it your sense that it's not? I don't believe it, it, it really is. I think it, I, well, it is. There's nighttime. I mean, they're they're actually doing it during the day also, but um, especially because of the uh, huge illumination you can get from LEDs now with just a small generator on a boat, they they can really light a place up, and you know the rays are easy to uh, find at night. But um, but yeah, I'm, I don't believe it is being picked up. Okay. Yeah, I know. If it in our case, if it's a charter boat, and we would pick that up as a state. But but if it's um, other states, might not. Um, any other questions or thoughts on that? I, I know they're not sharks, but they are indeed elasmobranchs. Yeah, Jason. Yeah, just what like wondering what the the next step is. So I'll, I'll offer a um, suggestion. Perhaps we, we could let. Um, Noah know uh, about this, and so you know they're. Um, can't remember the name of the the branch. I don't know if it'd be protected species or a large pelagic branch, but we could let them know. They can investigate it to see if they have a concern um, with the number being removed. You know, relative to the life life history characteristics that you mentioned. Um, I don't I don't know what else to to do. It's not something that we think is happening in Rhode Island, but. Yeah, Tony, you want to say something first and then uh, little boy. I'd ask Carol. She's online. Um, I Noah does do assessments of some ray species, so they are managed in some way. I don't know which ones exactly, but in terms of the commission, if it is the pleasure of this board to investigate whether or not we want to add X species of rays, and I would think we would need to specify which ones we're looking to do, then that would be a recommendation to the policy board. Typically, we do sort of a investigation of that species and try to get as much information as we can to present to the policy board to determine if it's a species that we want to add to the commission. We've done this in the past with species like whelk. Um, 
most recently uh, Jonah Crab, and then Jonah Crab was added, but we did not add Welk. Um, so, um, but Carol does have her hand up, so I can let her speak to which species are or are not managed by NOAA. Yeah, that'd be great. Hi, thanks. Um, so, skates and rays are not managed by my division, the Highland Migratory Species Management Division. I know there are some skate species managed. Um, through the New England and Mid-Atlantic Councils, the some of the skate, like thorny skate and clear nose skate. Um, I will uh, do some research to see if anyone's doing ray, ray management, but I am not aware of that. Yes, the concern might be a, a growing fishery or a potential for a rapidly growing fishery with no management and then you're you're, you're having to come back maybe at some point and deal with it well i know you had your hand up um yeah and then bill i was just going to quickly add that a few years ago there were concerns over um, um expansion of uh, of cow nose rays populations due to um excessive removal of some of the large coastal sharks that would otherwise prey on on cow nose rays so Really, if if NOAA Fisheries has any data they could share with us on on the dynamics of the of the cow nose ray bull nose ray population, uh, I think I think that would be very helpful in, in this. So we know whether these populations are indeed increasing or decreasing, and are they vulnerable to over harvest? Thank you. Right. Good point, uh, Bill Hyatt, and then I'll come back. Yeah, just a, a quick question. Um, you know, I thought I heard you say before that 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 Delaware doesn't have the authority to manage it as an in-state fisheries issue, and and I was just wondering why that's the case. I might have missed something. Uh, that's that's the law, Bill. I I'm not exactly sure. I think it's the they didn't really trust us unless I, I think it's partly we're we're just such a small state that. I think the thinking is for tidal fish that they're never just going to be in Delaware. And, uh, you know, therefore, if there's a plan out there, we can manage based on that. But otherwise, we, we're we not allowed to uh, set up regulations to limit the, the harvest. And, you know, I just was hoping uh, eventually something simple that could be done. But I know it is adding a species is a big lift and then getting into compliance and all that, but just thinking of some way that perhaps, you know, to uh, put this on the agenda or to just put this on the radar of everybody that, you know, this is something that we could be seeing more of up and down the coast. Okay, thanks. thanks. Russell, then Lynn. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, in, um, in Rio, Carnos Rays are a menace to the crab industry. They, um, they follow the the, uh, the shedding of the crabs in the Chesapeake Bay. They come up the bay, and and you can see where they are, but where the crabs are shedding in which part. And be in the Maryland part, it'll be starting crispy and come right on up the bay. But we have so many now that um, they they air crabbers use clams in little bags that, on the trot line. And they go in and they just mash those clams and your bait's gone. So not only that, um, they they cut the grass off in our creeks and our rivers as they're going through the grass to catch the soft crabs. They cut the grass off and we and we don't want that. We want the grass to stay there. So um, as you can notice, I I'm not a big uh, fan of the cow nose ray. Now there's so many different rays. This cow nose rays, this specific ray has no, uh, that we can find, has you know, any value to, for food. Um, about 25 years ago, when Larry Sims was president of the Maryland Water Association, we had a bunch of them caught and the wings cut off and packed and shipped them overseas to Korea. We were trying to find a market so that we could catch these. Um, they sent back and tried to send us a bill for dumping them. <laughs> they couldn't get they couldn't get rid of them. So you know, different areas, different things. But in Maryland, in our part of the bay, in the summer, 
they come up somewhere around the 1st of June until September, they are a menace to the crab industry. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thanks for that perspective, too. Uh, Lynn? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, just quickly, I wanted to say that back in 2015, I think Emily was the one who spearheaded this. We kind of as a race were highly controversial. We did a workshop in Maryland that really um, assembled pretty much all of the data we could find um, on this species. There is a report. I'd be happy to forward that to you, Tony, for distribution, just to sort of get at this, what do we know? What are, you know, what's what's fact? What's, you know, what is the life cycle? What are the vital rates? All those sort of things um, we looked at and that's um, on, on file with us. So I can send that around. Okay, thanks, Lynn. Roy, do you have another? Uh, very quickly, I was just going to elaborate for Bill Hyatt and others who might be wondering. Back in the middle 1980s, uh, legislation passed giving the Division of Fish and Wildlife regulatory authority over fin fish to the extent they're covered in an interstate fishery management plan. Prior to that, all um, governance over marine fin fish in Delaware was through the legislature. Uh, that has not changed since the middle 1980s. And, and that's why uh, the Division of Fish and Wildlife needs to act in concert with a, either a neighboring state or an approved fishery management plan in order to pass regulations on marine thin fish. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Roy. Anything else on rays? Well, y'all didn't talk about sharks much, but talk about rays, <laughs> John. I just, I just wanted to make clear I'm, I'm not looking to, you know, that we would uh, eliminate harvest to raise and, and Russell I, I understand that that there is concern about them but I'm just saying there is concern in Delaware just because you know there are guys coming back with 20 rays and and people see that and they're like what are you doing with all those rays and uh, the guides are very good about saying they clean them and they give them to the customers to to eat but you know I'm just as, as you said uh, I don't know that the all that is getting eaten let's just put it that way so thanks okay no, that's fine to bring that up too. I mean, that's the benefit of having a group like this where we can point out things that are going on and discuss them. Any other discussion of rays? All right, All right that's it for the agenda. So seeing then that we will, uh, whoop, Tony. I just wanted, today is Dustin's last day at the meeting and I just um, wanted to, I was gonna do this at policy board, but he won't be here. So I have to, you know, embarrass him a little bit now instead. Um, uh, for those of you that didn't see Bob's email, Dustin has taken a new position with the Environmental Defense Fund and a job that he declared to me was just the perfect next step path for him. Um, and so I'm, you know, it's always bittersweet when members of the staff leave, but I'm always super excited for the new challenges that they have waiting for them at their their next step. And I just want to thank Dustin for all of the work that he has done with the commission. He walked in day one with so much energy and such an inquisitive mind on how the commission works and our process and um, really steps in to get into the details, um, which was particularly helpful in summer flounder and bluefish and exploring analyses and working with the technical committees. Um, and then on the other hand, just really trying to make sure that the products that we put out are accessible to our stakeholders and working back and forth with them to make sure that what we were presenting for the harvest control rule was something that folks could understand, which was not an easy task. Um, and so I just uh, want to say thank you and good luck in your in your new ro new role. Thank you, Dustin. <laughs>
say goodbye in person because it really has been such a pleasure working with you all. I hope this isn't goodbye and farewell. I hope this is just me moving into a new position where I get to continue to work with you all on, on just making sure that we have sustainable fisheries, not only in the US, but, but abroad as well. So I'm excited for the new chapter. Thanks everyone. Thank you. All right. Um, having no other business to come before the uh, shark, Coastal Shark Board, we will adjourn uh, lunch and then uh, back here for some fun with Menhaden, right? <laughs> Eat a good lunch. The uh, heart luncheon is go out these doors, make